Hi, I'm Yifei. Together with Miguel, we worked on the stereo rig for the CSE 145 Embedded System Design Project class. The stereo rig is a device for 3D reconstruction of underwater environment. We hope this device will give researchers further insight of the marine environment. This is the current looking of the stereo rig. It consists of two IDS machine vision cameras installed on the camera mount, a camera external trigger, an IMU, and a compass. It also has an onboard computer for data acquisition and real-time processing. This quarter, my work mainly focuses on the stereo vision part of the device. We built an Arduino-based external trigger to control the synchronization of the two cameras. In this demo, I'm using a logic analyzer to visualize the output signals. As you can see, when a message is published to the frame rate topic, the external trigger automatically adjusts its timer setting and generates the triggering signal at the frequency given by the message. After the synchronization of the camera is accomplished, we calibrated the camera using a checkerboard. An analysis of the checkerboard calibration is done using MATLAB. This analysis shows that the overall mean error for this calibration is 0.24 pixels. This data is relatively ideal. However, it is still 5 times greater than that of the Bumblebee stereo vision system by Point Grey Research. This suggests some future work could be focused on the calibration process. For the stereo matching algorithm, we currently use the semi-global block matching algorithm for best quality and computation price ratio. Here is a comparison between the disparate image from the semi-global block matching algorithm and the original block matching algorithm. The disparate image that SGBM generates is significantly denser, meaning that we could get more depth information from the stereo matching algorithm. This is a demonstration of the point cloud we are getting from the stereo image pairs captured by the stereo rig. If we take a closer look at the point cloud, we could say it's relatively dense and accurate. However, it still suffers from the point cloud shadow and some random noises. In the future, we could implement the hardware accelerated filter to remove them. I've also worked on the web interface for the stereo rig. Currently, we use this a ROS bridge, WebSocket server, and a ROS node which converts messages into parameter settings for the web interface. Sadly, we haven't fully deployed the interface at the time when the video is made. Hi, my name is Miguel de Villa, and this is my CSE 145 project, the Underwater Tablet Enclosure, in partnership with Yifei Zhang on the Stereo Rig project team. Now, the current problem with the Stereo Rig is that the diver has to go through a middleman, somebody on land with a laptop, when they're under, while they're diving underwater, in order to make changes to the Stereo Rig, such as lighting, positioning, and all sorts of other things that will result in higher quality data of what they're trying to capture underwater. But obviously the problem with that is that having two people trying to coordinate when they're obviously so far apart is very difficult and cumbersome. So with this enclosure, they can take this tablet, the Samsung Galaxy Note 10.1 inch, down with them while they're diving to 1 to 200 feet, and it will survive, and they can make changes on the fly to whatever situation they find themselves in. And this enclosure is composed of an aluminum base with an O-ring seal, and a clear polycarbonate screen so that you can still see and manipulate the tablet while you're diving. And now I'm going to show you how to put it together.
good. Hello everyone. Uh, if the audio is muffled, it's because you're inside the tablet enclosure right now. And I hope you're ready for a test run. Shall we go for a swim? Project successful, I should say. <laughs> 